In this video, I am going to show you how to boot multiple ISO files directly from your computer's hard drive or SSD without using any USB pen drive. This method is extremely useful if you don't have a USB drive. You can just do a permanent multi-boot setup on your internal disk. Then you can install Windows ISOs, Linux ISOs and many other operating systems from a single menu. So without wasting any time, let's get started. First, open File Explorer on your computer. Go to your data drive where you have enough free space. Create a new folder and name it something simple like ISOs. Store all your ISO files in this folder. For example, Windows 10 ISO, Windows 11 ISO, Ubuntu ISO, Kali Linux ISO or any other operating system ISO files. Next, we need to create a small boot partition on the hard drive. That partition will be used only for booting, so it will be very small. Right click on the start button and open disk management. Here, look for the drive that you don't format frequently. This is usually your data drive where you keep your personal files. Try to avoid selecting the Windows C drive. Once you select the correct drive, right click on it and select shrink volume. It will ask how much space you want to shrink. Enter 1024 megabytes. This means we are creating a 1 GB space only for booting. Click shrink and wait until you see unallocated space. Now, right click on this unallocated space and select new simple volume. Follow the wizard. When it asks for a drive letter, assign the letter Z. When it asks for a file system, choose FAT32. Give the volume a name like multi-boot. Finish the setup. You'll now have a small 1GB FAT32 partition. This partition is very important because UEFI systems can boot only from FAT32. Next, we need two small tools that will help us boot ISO files directly from the hard drive. Open your browser and download a tool called BootIS. I'll place the download links in the video description. After that, download another tool called GRUBFM. Make sure you download the E and US version of GRUBFM. Once both tools are downloaded, extract the zip files. Now open the GRUBFM folder. Inside this folder, you will find a file named GRUBFM x64.efi. Right click on this file and rename it to boot.efi. After renaming, copy this boot.efi file to the Z drive which we just created. Now open BootIS as an administrator. Go to the UEFI tab and click on Edit Boot Entries. Select the disk where you created the 1GB FAT32 partition. Then click on Add. Browse and select the boot.efi file from the Z drive. You can give this boot entry any name you want, for example, Multi Boot ISOs. Make sure the boot partition selected here is the same as FAT32 1GB partition. Click save and then close. Now switch to the physical disk tab. Select your hard drive. Then click on parts manage. Select the Z drive partition. Remove the drive letter so it doesn't appear in the file explorer. Now close boot eyes. At this point, the multi-boot setup is complete. Now restart your computer and open the boot menu using your motherboard key like F12, F8, Escape or Delete. In the boot menu, you'll see the boot entry name you created earlier. Select it. You'll now see the GRUB FM menu. From here, navigate to the drive where you created the ISOs folder. Open the ISOs folder. 
From here, you can select any ISOs you want to install. For example, if you select the Windows 10 or 11 ISO, you'll see options to boot from it. If you select Ubuntu or any Linux ISO, you can boot into its live environment or installer. I'll select the Windows 10 ISO file. From here, you can choose to boot directly from the ISO, just like you normally do from a USB pen drive. As you can see on the screen, Windows 10 is now booting directly from the internal hard drive. No USB drive is connected. Don't worry, booting an ISO file like this will not change anything on your system until you start the installation process. I'll stop here to avoid making any changes to my system. I'll restart the system and show you the same process with the Linux ISO. This time, I'll select the Ubuntu ISO. As you can see, Ubuntu is also booting perfectly from the internal hard drive. This confirms that the multi-boot setup is working perfectly. Now I'll restart the computer one more time. This time, instead of selecting the multi-boot option, I'll simply let the system boot normally. As you can see, my original Windows 11 installation boots up exactly as before. Nothing has been modified, nothing has been deleted, and all my partitions are still safe. So this setup does not interfere with your existing operating system. It only adds an extra boot option that you can use whenever you need it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.